pam 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 it's a good day hey guys it's Yulia and today's a good day so I thought I'd make a video in this video I'm gonna talk about my art stuff I have a playlist on this channel called sketchbook where you can go to check out my drawings you can see more of my art on my Instagram which I'm going to link to below I thought I would do a little bit of a background video on why am I making this art when did I start did I start when I got sick where do I get my materials? What do I want to do with it? What is my goal here? So here we go. How did I get into art in the first place? Did I just start making it when I was sick? Actually, I went to art school. I don't dance now, I make money moves. Many years ago, called LaGuardia in New York City. I made art for four years. When I started making the sketch drawings for this channel, I hadn't drawn in over a decade. I just had kind of left that behind me. I went completely into my field, which is literature. I went like full steam ahead, ignored every other form of self-expression. There's definitely a sense within academia, or I guess within any field, there's like a professionalization. You're not taken seriously if you do more than one thing. And when I got sick, that kind of perspective evaporated. You should express yourself in all of the ways that you want to. Focus on the things that you think are beautiful rather than on having a certain kind of image in whatever profession you have. So I have a friend who's an artist. Her name is Daina Levena. She makes realistic paintings of people and of horses. Horses are her specialty, so she makes these beautiful majestic horse paintings with like gorgeous backgrounds. They're really beautiful and she paints in oil, so like she's, she's for real. She bought me all these art supplies, so she bought me watercolors, she bought me watercolor paper, that shit is expensive, okay? I just started messing around with it, doing whatever I felt at the time. In terms of the kind of art that I'm making and why am I making it, it's really different every day. When I see these images kind of in front of my closed eyes, I immediately try to sketch them down and know where all the colors are. And then I actually sit down to my desk and I try to make it. Sometimes it comes out the way that I want. Um, most of the time it doesn't. And I think that that's pretty much par for the course for any kind of creative endeavor. A small percentage of the time, it's going to look sort of the way that you want it, and most of the time it's not. So through making art for several months, I realized that I've become a good expert on what not to do. So I'm gonna show you things that I've made that you should not be replicating. This is how not to do a wash. Mistakes in this wash include colors not mixing properly, and when they do mix, they turn into brown. Do we want the colors to turn into brown? We do not. In terms of what you are supposed to do, I don't know what you're supposed to do, so you can go visit another video for that. These are lessons in what not to do. I'm available for tutoring. Please book me. This is more fucking up. You can see that this is another failed wash. I really am an expert on failed washes. I don't think you'll find anyone else who does as many failed washes and fails as hard as I do. You're screwed and you're left with these pieces that are not even, that don't blend well. This became brown. So it kind of looks like the fish is pooping. That was not intentional. You really need to know your color theory, which I have forgotten. What can I do to make it look like I meant to do that? One of the things that you can do is scratch into the painting. It kind of draws your eye a little bit from the rest of the painting. And also, I mean, obviously I was going for, uh, actually this isn't obvious, I don't know why I said obviously because it's not obvious. Um, I was going for something that was a lot more deep and profound than what ended up happening here. It ended up looking like a children's painting, which happens a lot. Like I'm going for, I went for something deep with this Jesse painting and he was supposed to look like he's thinking about Heidegger, which is true, he's probably currently right at this moment thinking about Heidegger. 
but it ended up looking a lot more like a caricature and that happens. So that is something that is probably going to happen 80 to 90% of the time. I'm going to make these and I'm going to be like, wow, I'm, I'm really expressing something profound about their character and it ends up looking like a cartoon. And that's just how it is, right? You just have to keep doing stuff over and over and over and over again. And the more you do it, the better you get. And there's also just a bit of kind of luck that plays into it, right? Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not a realist, as you can tell. The proportions are always going to be off because I'm much more interested in the expression of the person. Hi, Jessie. Shout out. This is a piece that I made because I went on a Miro kick. I'm a big fan of Miro. We're going to get married. A bunch of symbols because Miro created his own symbolic language. I started from here and then went all the way along. So all of these images just kind of came up on their own without premeditation. The fuck ups here include the scales. So these are scales. These are not scales. Scales are supposed to look uneven like this, not in straight little lines like that. Another fuck up is the way that the watercolor is so light, most of the painting looks completely faded. Use more layers and more color because it's always going to dry lighter than it looks initially. Okay, so here's this lady, who's also me. Can, can you tell? This one was inspired by Egon Shile, who I'm also marrying, and I don't know how I'm gonna explain that to Miro, but like, I wanna marry a lot of people. So he's just gonna have to deal with it. The hair looks a little bit like monk hair. That didn't really work out. And her skin color didn't really work out either because I was working with a very limited number of colors. She has orange yellow skin. She has cholera or something. I've been thinking about what separates art that's good or nice or even beautiful from so-called high art. I don't know the answer. If you have any thoughts on the matter, please feel free to comment below. What I've come up with so far is just that there needs to be some level on which the art is inaccessible to children. Maybe a child would say, oh, I like the colors. It's pretty, it looks cute. It could be in a children's book. But on the intellectual level, where everything here is deconstructed, a child might not get. That's kind of all I've come up with so far. It's hard to deduct or induct, please correct me. What qualifies as high art when you're looking at all of the things that have qualified in the past in the art world, or currently qualify as high art in the art world? Because you can have things that are neither beautiful nor intellectually captivating that are somehow exhibited in all of the kind of highest galleries and selling for a bazillion dollars. When you're trying to come up with a definition based on what humans have determined is high art to this point, how much does background of the art play into it? To what extent does your kind of like pieces on the artwork play into it? This is a piece about chronic fatigue syndrome. It actually says chronic fatigue syndrome underneath the paint. And the fuck up here was using paper that is not watercolor paper. You see that the colors have become very very pale, right, because the paper is not did not hold them. It looked kind of cool in the first few minutes after it was made, but thereafter it faded, so don't do that. The worst fuck up by far is this painting of my friend Ashna. Ashna, I am so sorry. The idea for this painting is that Ashna is a person who continuously reinvents themselves. The title of it is I Contain Multitudes because it's supposed to be them giving birth to themselves. The inside of the mouth are pink. So that's supposed to be suggestive. How did I fuck up? How did I not fuck up? First of all, you should decide 
if you want black lines for your skin color or not, right? And probably not because the effect of them here is that they look like they have a handlebar mustache when they don't. They're actually not mustache. With the skin color, you are supposed to know your values. And if no one taught you any values, then you don't know which parts are the same color in a darker or a lighter tone or if you're supposed to use a different color because there's lights coming from one direction, not another direction, and so there's actually a variety of color happening on their face. I guess like a final fuck up would be that if you are doing something ambitious with facial expression, I made this up so I didn't ask them to actually send me a photograph of themselves going like, ah, right? which I should have. Ashna, you have my deepest apologies, and when I get a proper photograph of you, I am going to redo this and do a better job. That's it guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like this video, comment, subscribe. Let me know if this kind of material is something that you like watching and it cheers you up, or you don't want visual art on this channel. Just let me know, and subscribe because there is no schedule. I don't make videos a certain number of times a week or a month or a year. They only come up when I'm having a good day. So if you want to be alerted to when the next video randomly appears, uh, subscribe to the channel. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! Use the tissue paper to um, Shit. Brain fog. Brain fog. It's not blend. I don't I don't I don't have the word.